Stevens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, both of them uh, are related to each other, and TEN is usually uh, a for extension of uh, SJS. Uh, in general, these both are uh, life-threatening, uh, t- uh, TEN is of course more life-threatening than SJS, SJS usually uh, have a good prognosis, and both of them are systemic syndromes that occur as a reaction to an adverse antigen, right? The most common identified culprits are usually drugs as opposed to erythema multiform in which it was usually an infection. The drugs can be antibiotics, can be anti-epileptics, can be ANSAs, allopurinol, uh, anti-malarials like chloroquine. But remember that there is quite a frequent question on the exams that which of the following drugs does not cause SGS or TEN. And they usually put uh, any of the uh, thyroid-affecting drugs like levothyroxine, and that is usually the answer because uh, levothyroxine or any other uh, thyroid associated drug does not cause this syndrome. Uh, apart from drugs, however, uh, GVHD or graft, uh, graft versus uh, host disease or malignancies or vaccinations, even infections in the least cases, like for example mycoplasma, again, can cause it. Even systemic illnesses can lead to this disease. And also the morbidiform eruptions, uh, which uh, I talked about uh, in the first episode. Uh, the SGS or 10 leads to keratinocyte death, actually, and ultimately into bully formation, uh, usually by diff- two different mechanisms. Number one, the T cells release perforins, which uh, perforate the keratinocytes, and then they inject granzyme B, which uh, initiate apoptosis, or they can also uh, uh, release a fast ligand to form the fast fast ligand complex, which also results in apoptosis of the cells. Now, SGS and 10 are considered a spectrum of the same disease at all i told you uh, the difference is that the sjs is purely sjs when there's uh, less than 10 percent of the uh, body surface areas is affected when it's more than 30 percent it is pure 10 and if it uh, lies between 10 and 30 percent it is an uh, it is an overlap of the two uh, uh, entities Clinically, it begins with a flu-like illness and systemic symptoms develop, uh, followed by a skin eruption, which uh, occurs days after the drug exposure. And the eruption is characterized by dusky erythematous macules. In EM, it was papules. In this case, it is macules, both erythematous, with or without skin necrosis. Skin necrosis is not necessary, but whenever it happens, it is a full thickness epidermis uh, involved, as opposed to EM, in which there's just upper epidermis involved. Uh, one of the differences. And there's extensive bullous skin detachment. Bulla formation is very, very common as opposed to EM, which is, was rare. And there is complete skin detachment, of course. It usually begins in the trunk and then spreads to the extremities, involving the palms and soles in the, in the, set, in the, in the centrifugal pas- uh, fashion, as opposed to EM. When a bully rupture, they leave extensive areas of denuded skin and erythematous erosions with a hemorrhagic crust. Now, this can be related with uh, the uh, warfarin's associated skin necrosis in which there was hemorrhagic blisters, in which blisters contained hemorrhagic material. In this case, the, the, list, the blisters are fine, but whenever they rupture, they leave behind uh, uh, a denuded skin with uh, erythematous erosions, which are then crusted by uh, a hemorrhagic material. There's a difference. Classically, manual traction of the skin leads to skin detachment that happens in uh, all the pamphlets figures uh, spectrum disorders uh, that is called positive Nikolsky sign. This is the only drug eruption uh, which is Nikolsky positive. Uh, the mucous membrane involvement can result in either eyes are involved so they, that causes corneal ulcerations, conjunctivitis and ultimately bleeding uh, and uh, ultimately blindness. Uh, if the GI tract is involved, uh, you, uh, you are unable to eat and you have diarrhea, GI bleeds and obstruction. If the respiratory tract is involved, you will have difficulty breathing and respiratory failure ultimately. And if the genitourinary tract is involved, you will have dysuria, geni- genitourinary bleeding and obstruction and ultimately renal failure. The diagnosis is of course best in 
initially on the uh, clinical, but the most accurate test again is skin, skin biopsy, which shows degeneration of basal cells just like EM, but there is minimal dermal and perivascular lymphocytic inflammation, right? Minimal dermal. In, in that case, there was uh, a more dermal uh, uh, inflammation and lymphocytic infiltration. Along with that, subepidermal blisters are there. This is a must. In EM, it was optional. In this case, they are a must. And the most important thing, the full thickness epidermal necrosis as opposed to only upper epidermal in erythema multiform. The treatment, first line treatment is first the thing that the, you should avoid the drug, right? Discontinue the drug. Second, give fluids and electrolytes. Third, give analgesics. Pain is severe. And the patient should be admitted to the burn unit immediately for continued monitoring and management that, uh, that actually involves mitigating temperature loss and preventing secondary infections. Second line treatment involves IVIG or plasmapheresis. Though this treatment is controversial, it has not been proven to uh, improve mortality. Uh, it is still given. This is all about SGS and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Please subscribe to the channel. That will help me a lot. Signing off.